I spent the past three days to recreate the viral iCord hook to see if it actually works. The video on Instagram by Manu Crochet has well over 250,000 likes, but she didn't tell us where she bought it nor any other details. Frustrating. So I tried to build it from scratch using only cheap materials from Amazon for less than five US dollars and the results might actually surprise you. A lot of knitters started on one of these knitting dollies. We call them Strickliesel here in Germany. Super easy, but not exactly fast. It takes like 15 minutes or so until you can see the eye cord emerging through the hole here at the bottom. Later on, you probably learned that you can use double pointed knitting needles to knit an eye cord. But even that process is kind of slow if you need an eye cord that is three feet long and you tend to mess up the stitch definition ever so often. Often. So let's show you how I built the super fast iCord hook. Okay, first I bought three of these little hooks here and they come with these handles. So first of all, I had to remove the hooks from the handle and I thought, well, if I just hammer on it, it will splinter. Well, turns out it didn't. So I actually put this into the oven and then it started to melt a little bit and then I hammered on it quite vigorously. And then this little uh, slot here started to open and then I could kind of squeeze the hook out. I'm going to do the exact same with the other two hooks and then I'm going to use a uh, soft clay and then I'm going to try uh, to craft a new handle. Uh, maybe I'll wrap it, wrap it with a little bit of wire to increase uh, the durability because I don't know how brittle this actually will be. Let's see. Uh, if you check online, you can also buy sets of um, with these hooks and um, all the hooks will come without a handle. So I'm actually not sure, um, maybe tapestry knotters or something like that need this. However, these sets typically come with, uh, uh, this one came with six hooks, but all in a different size. So you need three of these sets as well. I'll put uh, links in the description below uh, where I bought all of this. Uh, maybe it'll help you. So I have my three little hooks here. Now I'm going to try to turn these into a little handle. So I rolled out my uh, soft clay mass. Now I'm going to oh, kind of arrange them close to each other. So like so. And then I'm going to turn this into a handle, trying to uh, keep the spacing um, the same. Here, that's probably uh, the trickiest part. And then the idea is that I'm kinda going to sandwich it like this. Uh, let's see if this work, uh, works. I have some uh, tools here that are probably not really helping but um i have to be honest with you i haven't worked with uh soft clay in ages so well it probably shows but i'm sure i will be able to turn this into a proper handle pretty soon if it doesn't stick um well, kind of like that. So I'm going to work on this for a couple of more minutes and show you the results. So I've been tinkering around a little bit, well, to kind of perfect the shape here. And what really kind of helped me was, um, so that's why I just wanted to share this bit. So I put it on its, well, spine, I guess. And that kind of uh, really helped me finding a better form here so it's of course you need to make sure that the hooks remain um, straight and you know at a nice little angle and now I'm going to put it into the oven and uh, let it cool down and see if this actually works.
Okay, so one hour later, this is the result. Now look at that, isn't this beautiful? I'm actually quite amazed how it looks and it's actually quite sturdy, so I don't think I need to uh, improve it any further. And it rests really, really well in my hands. So uh, I don't know, I mean, you can't really see this, but this feels probably better than almost all ergonomic crochet hooks I ever held in my hands. So this is actually quite amazing. Um, but of course we need to see if it actually works. So let's put this to the test. So first I probably need to cast on stitches. So. Um, let's do a long tail cast on or try to do a long tail cast on. So this is, well, kind of fiddly, but, well, it works. So there we go. So we have three stitches on our needles or hooks or whatever you call them. And now we can start knitting the eye cord. So I'm going to wrap it here around the hook and then I can pull here on the tail. And as you can see, these little levers here are closing. And then I can pull it off. Woohoo! So this is actually working. Wow, I, I, I kind of doubted it. So let's slide these stitches here back to the, the hook. It's a bit more, it's a bit tight. So I try to knit or hook or whatever a little bit more looser. So Wow, this is actually working. So that last stitch just seems to be a bit of a problem, but it works. So let's so. This is fast. This is actually fast. So this is actually working. Look at the eye cord. Seems to be quite regular. I mean, I think um, you kind of need to develop the right kind of technique. So uh, you need to get used to that hook kind of. Also, you always have to make sure that you slide um, the stitches past the levers. But otherwise, I mean, guys, this is working. And I, well, here, this last hook often seems to be a bit of a problem. And you really need to force yourself to, well, this is a bit more difficult for me to knit on the or hook on the looser side. So uh, every time I tension the working on a bit too tightly, I notice that things don't work. And of course you always need to pay attention that you don't accidentally. But I am thoroughly impressed this is actually working. So I spend another uh, five minutes or so here knitting, hooking, crocheting my eye cord. And look at the sheer length of that. Look how long this is. If I used the knitting dolly, uh, I probably would, this would have taken me half the afternoon. And even with double pointed knitting needles, it certainly probably would have taken uh, 20 minutes or half an hour. So this is quite a bit faster. However, what I'm noticing is I need to pull on the eye cord quite a bit to get these stitches past these latches. So uh, sometimes they also get a bit stuck. So uh, this is kind of rough on the hands long term. Even after five minutes, I'm noticing it. Well, maybe I still need to work on my technique, kind of like when you start knitting, I don't know. See, and sometimes they get stuck. Uh, I think staggering these hooks was a smart idea because if you look at it in slow motion, first we are knitting, well, knitting this first stitch then this second stitch, it also needs yarn and it can steal it from the working yarn. And then this last stitch can also steal yarn from the working yarn. However, this last st stitch sometimes gets kind of stuck. 
So I'm thinking that if I stagger these a little bit less, maybe just now it's like five millimeters or so, and maybe uh, three or two millimeters would have been better. Also, if I fan them out a little bit more, then I suspect that there just would be more yarn for these stitches to work on and it wouldn't be as hard to pull things through. Another thing I am wondering really, if you buy a set of these latch hooks here, so they come with this little bit here at the very end, so, and mine didn't have that, this was, there was just like a little indentation or something like that, so inside my well clay soft clay uh, handle this probably would be a bit more secure I'm just guessing I'm just guessing that if I use this for any prolonged time it might actually break or so I don't know uh, I haven't done this however on the other hand these uh, hooks here are kind of crooked here they have this bend here so I am thinking that it actually might be a be more ergonomic to work with them rather than having all this straight uh, length here. So, so these are just some considerations in case you want to replicate my results then uh, do keep these things in mind. And I mean if things don't work out the way you thought it would you can probably just use a hammer and uh, uh, retry. So we are back here in the studio for some final thoughts. Does it work? Well, once you find your rhythm and adjust your technique, it actually works surprisingly well. I do feel it's a little bit hard on your fingers and hands because you continuously need to keep a high tension and pull on that I cord. It is, however, a lot faster and I do feel that the resulting I cord is actually a lot neater. So when you knit it with double pointing knitting needles, there's often this one row every 30 rows where you mess up your stitch definition and that can be very visible. Now, there are also these I cord mills, cranks, I actually don't know what's the proper name for it. Uh, in theory, you just crank out an I cord and one might think it's faster. I seriously never got these to work properly. And because you constantly need to readjust the weight at the bottom, plus even then it's actually not that much faster because uh, you really need to crank a bit until you, uh, until you covered all four stitches and knit it in the round. So it actually takes like three seconds or so to finish one round. So it's not that much faster and the result is often actually not all that neat. Another thing you have to consider is that with a with an I-cord hook like this one, you can easily adjust things. So I'm reasonably sure you could create the same hook for a two-stitch I-cord or a four-stitch I-cord if that's what you want, but maybe a little bit more importantly, you can also adjust the hook size because these are available in possibly every size on the, on the, for every yarn on the market. Something that is not possible for one of these I-cord cranks or for the knitting dollies where basically, I mean, the hook size is fixed. So if you use it for anything above, say, DK yarn, it typically doesn't work anymore. So I think this is actually a lot more versatile. At the end of the day, this looks super fun, well, but it's probably not gonna revolutionize the whole knitting industry. I mean, if you love to knit, I don't know, Stephen Best shawls or so, he often starts with an I cord and has you picking up stitches from it because it looks tends to look a little bit neater uh, than a proper I cord cast on. Well, this could be a fun tool. Well, I think what blew my mind the most was that this actually works because often you see these, I don't know, five minute crafts videos and you go like, oh, that's amazing. And you try it and it's like the most epic fail ever and this does work but I think also the fact uh, how easy it was to create an ergonomic handle for my hook that just blew my mind away because um, I tried out quite a couple of ergonomic crochet hooks and they never worked for me they always felt kind of awkward and with this clay I mean this is I I didn't 
test this long term, but I needed quite a long eye cord for, for in preparation for this video. So, so it actually feels quite light in my hand and super nice. So I can well see myself uh, investigating this further and maybe create my own personal ergonomic crochet hook in the future. I think that could be very, very nice. Anyway, I thought this video was a fun little exercise. Comment below with your thoughts. Uh, like this video if you enjoyed watching. And as always, happy knitting and enjoy the rest of your day.